let's talk about the economic impact that China's Cerveza problem has had on their economy, on Japan's economy, the surrounding economy. And then I will also share a few stories and anecdotes that I've heard from my friend and source, who I've now known for over a year, and he is trapped inside Wuhan, still there. And I'm getting reports from him every couple days. So first off, right now with the real time updates here, the official numbers, which I don't believe, I think they're nowhere near accurate. There's been rules changes, there's been you know definitions of who's infected, and people who died of pneumonia were not counted over the last more than a month. But the website, the wuhanvirus.com has the count there. So there's a couple other websites that do this, but the stories have come out now for over a week. And I found this story very interesting that the, the stories from February 11th from Reuters that she warned officials that efforts to stop China's Cerveza problem could hurt the economy. So Chinese President Xi Jinping warned top officials last week that efforts to contain the new Cerveza problem had gone too far, threatening, <laughs> I have to censor myself, it's just ridiculous, but I don't want this demonetized and I do want people to get the information I have. Threatening the country's economy, sources told Reuters, days before Beijing rolled out new measures to soften the blow, with growth at its slowest in nearly three decades. Also, I think China's claiming that the GDP growth for the first quarter of 2020 still going to be projected around 5% GDP growth. I think more reality is more in line with what we just got from Japan. The Japan numbers for Japan's GDP are down 6.3%. So I think that's more reflective of reality than the China numbers for China's GDP growth and the reality and then the official numbers that China has for their Cerveza problem. I have to keep censoring myself. I have to remember this. It's going to be ridiculous to remember to, to talk about Cerveza and Cerveza problem. I have to stop myself because if I name it once, it's automatically demonetized. That's how ridiculous YouTube is. Okay, back to the article. With growth at its slowest in nearly three decades, China's leaders seem eager to strike a balance between protecting an already slowing economy and stamping out an epidemic that has killed well over 1,000 people officially infected. Now we're over 70,000 infected, 71,230 according to the numbers. Unofficially, anecdotally, from what I've heard from my source in Wuhan, I think that that 71,000 number is way low just for Wuhan. And what was going around the internet also was a CDC employee with a blue check mark on Twitter. Someone, one of their friends, this doctor's friends, was speaking to her either in text messages or in direct messages on Twitter. And she admitted, the CDC official here in the U.S., that over a thousand people are already infected here in the U.S. And the U.S. federal government, the CDC, told the U.S. mainstream media all of them. So Fox News, CNBC, ABC, NBC, C. Uh, uh, CBS, yeah, I almost said CNBS. <laughs> I'm used to saying that for CNBC, but told all the mainstream media not to divulge that, not to look into it, not to divulge that. They don't want to cause a panic. So that's the rumor going around Twitter now. Also, I saw a really great, before I forget, a really great expose by an independent journalist, Simone Gao. She, they screwed up her video. They demonetized it. They put on age restriction. So you have to log into the account to watch it. And she actually, one of her journalists or one of the people on her team had a phone interview with, I think, a manager or one of the employees at one of the Wuhan cremation, one of the funeral homes that's doing some of the cremations. But from what I heard, there's at least seven crematoriums that were running nonstop. And that was over three weeks ago in Wuhan, outside of Wuhan. And there has not been any manufacturing done in Wuhan for at least three weeks, so there should not be pollution in the air, really. So this pollution, everyone's seen the videos on Twitter, if you're on Twitter. They've seen the videos of those spray trucks. There's even drones that are spraying that stuff. We don't know what the, the stuff in the spray is, so maybe it's milder bleach. Hopefully not, but maybe it is. God knows the type of chemicals that are in that stuff. But also, I was told by my source in Wuhan, trapped in Wuhan, that there is also temperature taking drones now. So the Chinese government has unbelievably screwed this up. It's not just been Beijing. It's also been the local government in Wuhan. It's been the provincial government in Hubei. 
And the amount of screw-ups over the last six weeks are nuts. Um, there were first, according to stuff I've read and heard, there's been in, there was infected cases in early December. And they just didn't really do much. And any doctors who tried to warn people about, you know, the infection, the virus, ammonia, uh, pneumonia, people getting pneumonia and dying, they were, you know, censored, arrested. Those stories are out there. And citizen journalists are disappearing who are filming this stuff. It's just the Chinese government did not want to admit that this was bad. They let the amount of people infected in Wuhan just go exponential for over a month. And now they're playing catch up. And it, this is going to be the rest of the world's problem. This is the, this for China is, in my opinion, it's larger than Chernobyl. And the rest of the world is going to have to clean up China's mess. There, I said it right. So I'll talk about the economic consequences to China's economy. And there are stories coming out. Simone Gao mentioned in that video where not only did she interview someone working at one of the funeral homes that's doing massive amounts of cremations, and the person on the phone said that they're doing over 100 cremations per day. So just nuts. And that there's a bunch of, um, there's at least seven other funeral homes outside Wuhan. But I was told that there's in, um, specific crematoriums. So obviously it's going to be tough getting all this stuff confirmed. But there's videos of trucks like leaving Wuhan. Those are going around Twitter too. Massive amounts of like trucks, just long caravan lines of trucks leaving the city, in and out of the city. My educated guess would be those were dead bodies. Uh, from the stuff I've been told. But Simone Gao was talking about a study from, I think, Xinhua University, how 80% of private Chinese businesses could be, because the economy there it has basically ground to a total halt, that 80% of Chinese businesses could be out of cash in three months. And this is why you have extraordinary amounts of intervention by the People's Bank of China, which is China's central bank, and on top of this, you also have like a rent reduction program. There's all kinds of like, there's not, I don't know if there's loan forgiveness. I've, I've seen that there's like loan delays. So you can defer payments on loans. So China's doing, the banking system is doing that. I mean, the Chinese banks, if you've seen some of the stories going around in the last day or two, the Chinese banks are now asked to clean, disinfect money and or destroy actual, you know, the currency. So if there's paper yuan or paper rmb they actually have to destroy it now that's how crazy things are so this is definitely not just the flu okay anyone who's saying that it's just the flu is totally full of shit they're they they either believe all the mainstream media's narrative or they don't care they don't know or they don't care so um i'll talk about the economic impacts but she was worried that this would hurt the economy uh, this is ridiculous that she cared more about the economy when they could have over a month ago in early January, late December, early January, they could have been more proactive and they did not. They were really behind the ball. From what I've read, the Chinese government did not really get things going until mid to late January. So they let this thing run wild with amount of infections for well over a month. And now the rest of the world is going to have to clean this up. This is going to probably end up being worse than Chernobyl, at least for China's economy. Okay, so let me talk about some of these articles here. This article came out from Reuters. You can't, I think I put this one for the screenshot. Yeah, this is one you can see here. This one came out February 12th. China takes major steps to prop up coronavirus hit economy. Chinese policymakers have implemented a raft of measures to support an economy jolted by a coronavirus outbreak that is expected to have a devastating impact on fourth quarter growth. People's Bank of China, attempt, which is their central bank or PBOC, attempting to restore investor confidence and its global market shudder at potentially damaging impact of the Cerveza problem on world growth. Below are some fiscal and monetary policies put in place by the government and the central bank since the outbreak. On February 3rd and 4th, the People's Bank of China, or PBOC, pumped in 1.7 trillion yuan or $242.74 billion through open market operations. Let me add here, I did a video in the last couple weeks about the amount of bailouts that were going on in China's economy well before the Cerveza problem. 
Okay, so China's economy was having a lot of problems with bad credit, with dollar denominated debt problems, with forward dollar swaps before that. Um, also with Trump putting the tariffs on and then rising pork prices. So China had bad stagflation in their real economy. And on top of this, in 2019, in spite of China having credit problems, they still flooded their economy with another $4 trillion of new credit into the economy. And the economy was already having problems dealing with the current levels of credit. So Beijing tried to take a break from the amount of credit in the economy and the economy slowed down too much for policy goals and they just hit the accelerator in the last couple months of the year to flood even more back in because it wasn't meeting the expectations, the central economic central planning expectations. But now that even more money has been flooded in over the last three or four months, I mean easily over a trillion dollars of emergency liquidity programs, emergency liquidity injections, emergency liquidity programs, and different types of bailouts have been flooded into China's economy. It's an insane number. And that's why the Chinese, it's an attempt to prevent the Chinese uh, stock market from crashing, um, to prop up Chinese businesses. And you see similar behavior, I think, here in the U.S. with market interventions because the travel stocks have not collapsed. Surprisingly, these casino stocks, these airline stocks, these cruise ship stocks, they, they have not collapsed. And I've heard anecdotally, I was listening to a podcast from Capitalist Exploits and their hedge fund guys, and they have a lot of friends in Singapore and other parts of Asia that are retired from the West. And they were talking about friends' businesses in Asia that used to get Chinese tourists and other fluent tourists. And these businesses in the last month, they've, they're down 90%. They've lost 90% of their business in the last month. Crazy stuff, right? So Japan's GDP numbers are definitely reflecting reality way more than China's economic data. Okay, back to this article you can see here on your screen. China's central bank unexpectedly cuts some key short-term money market rates and analysts predict more of those are likely. Central bank advisor says the possibility of a, another rate cut, in, uh, excuse me, another rate cut in the country's benchmark loan prime rate on February 20th has significantly increased. Central bank said on February 6th that it will use tools such as targeted reserve requirement cuts, relending, and rediscount to support key sectors. The cost of special relending at 300 billion yuan from the PBOC to commercial banks is relatively low. The PBOC has told banks to cap rates on loans for selected firms at 3.15%. K Finance Ministry said on February 9th that all levels of government had allocated a total of um, 71.85 billion or around 10.26 billion US dollars. That was last week. February, well, February 9th, so yeah, about a week ago. China's Finance Ministry said on February 1st materials directly used for, uh, for Cerveza control, self censoring again, will be exempt from import tariffs. Bond, okay, they intervened in the bond market and they caused a bond market rally. I have another article about that. I have over a dozen articles open, so hopefully I don't crash my web browser with all the articles and stories. But there's really good coverage here of small business owner. There's interviews. I'm going to read you some of them. There's interviews with Chinese small business owners that are like, they're going to be... They're going to have to fire people, uh, a good amount of their workforce in the next month or two if this isn't fixed. Uh... There's a lot of rumors of Chinese businesses are going to be out of cash in the next three months, an enormous amount of them. So some of them will have emergency lines of credit. The People's Bank of China, the Chinese banks, which were already stressed over the last year or so with Baoshang Bank and Bank of Jinzhou and Hong Feng Bank and the sovereign wealth fund, China Sovereign Wealth Fund and the larger Chinese banks are being asked to do all kinds of bailouts. If you don't believe me, I have the screenshots of all those articles talking about all the different types of bailouts. I made a short video about that in the last two weeks, and I'll put it in the information and description section. So this article came out today from the South China Morning Post by Pearl Liu. China's monetary authorities to keep bank credits on tap to help companies survive the business slump caused by the Cerveza problem. China's central bank and financial regulators have offered additional funds to banks, prodding them to help manufacturers and businesses pull through an economy that is being hobbled by the twin burdens of a trade war and the nation's worst, worst health crisis in nearly two decades. 
I would say it's their worst health crisis ever. If we actually knew the real numbers, the bank regulator, the, the, the real numbers, I mean, the numbers that they're the official numbers out of total China for infected. If you look at the amount of infected in the other provinces, there's cases where they were listing like very few people dead and only like seven or eight hundred infected last week. They're a total joke. Considering how much of China's on lockdown, it's it's a total joke. The numbers are awful. The they're totally divorced from reality. That's what they are. Okay, back to the article. Bank regulator will ensure that small and medium-sized enterprises get access to $77 billion or 537 billion yuan of credit lined up to help them pull through the business slump caused by the coronavirus outbreak, the China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission said during a press conference in Beijing today. Companies that can restart production as soon as possible when their workers return from their extended Lunar New Year holiday will receive the support of the People's Bank of China. This is the issue here, because if China tries to force people back to work, you saw where 200 factory workers went in. They were, I guess their the factory owner bribed the local officials or the police to restart the business, what, 10 days ago? And then one person got infected and they're all trapped in the factory. 200 factory workers are trapped in that factory with one person infected. They're quarantined now. So the odds of more people getting infected are high because they're trapped with the one infected person. I mean, this vi virus is highly contagious. Shout out to Chris Martinson if he's listening. Absolutely superb job. Not making any money doing it. This is a very good public service he's doing. He's probably going to end up saving a lot of people's lives with the information and knowledge that he's giving people. Okay, back to the article. Receive the support of People's Bank of China to the extent that a small increase of non-performing loans owned to bank, owed to banks will be tolerated. The central banks, oh, oh we got to read this again. So these businesses will receive the support of the People's Bank of China to the extent that a, quote, small increase of non-performing loans owed to, to banks will be tolerated, <laughs> in, in air quotes. The central bank said at the same press conference. So loans are going to be forgiven, more bailouts. Um, bailouts were already occurring before China's Cerveza problem. I've documented this at length. Most of the gold community does not want to hear this. A financial credit support system has been offered to enterprises while help for areas hit hard by the novel Cerveza problem have been strengthened. Why well, I almost screwed up there. And this whole video would have gone demonetized. CBIRC Vice Chairman Liang Tao said, Joint press conference also attended by State Administration of Foreign Exchange is the latest round of state support that has been lined up to prevent the world's second largest economy from going into a tailspin. Economic growth, which already slowed to 6% in the fourth quarter, is likely to sputter further in the three months ending in March as an estimated 50 million workers were homebound. I've heard it's a lot more than 50 million were homebound since late January in a viral outbreak, disrupting production of everything from clothing to toys and crucial components. The viral outbreak, which sickened more than 66,000... Okay, this is a... You, I already read the numbers from the real-time update. People's Bank of China monetary stance is unchanged, and it will maintain a prudent monetary policy. We will take measures, quote, we will take measures to deal with problems immediately, and we are confident that it will not lead to large-scale inflation in China. So China already had really bad stagflation with pork prices and also with rent in many major cities. I've been covering this for over a year thanks to a number of my sources in mainland China who've been actually tracking the pork prices for me and giving me information for a while. And from my source that is trapped in Wuhan, there, and I'll talk about this, there seems to be now temperature-taking drones. So not only are there drones in China that are spraying this... Chem these chemicals, right, to try to prevent. People seen the video, some of the videos. Um, by the way, no Western media, and this is weird. No Western media I've seen, and I searched this a lot. I spent over an hour doing this last week, looking for Western media articles on the chemical spraying drones in China. It was only foreign media. I had to find pictures and articles only in other languages. So I think it was like Spanish and. Maybe Italian I found it in, but I did not find it in any English language articles on that. So they have 
chemical spraying drones all um especially in wuhan but i guess all over china but what i was told by my source boots on the ground in wuhan who has given me very good information over the last year that i've known him that there is now temperature taking drones that from a far away distance if you are outside and by the way now there's basically you're not supposed to be outside anymore from what i was told so you can go outside of your like apartment building or your condo building and you can go get food delivery and i think the food delivery might be handled now by like it's there's wage and there's price controls in place i believe there's rationing and price controls for food and what my source in wuhan told me maybe this is just for the uh, the community that he was in that it was rationing for pork and the pork prices were going up a lot so food policy not only do you have temperature taking drones now outside that can take your temperature from far away and if you have a temperature that is above normal by even one or two degrees you're risk risking being arrested and then quarantined and thrown in with sick people but food policy was so bad in wuhan that it's changed three times now in the last three or four weeks so initially when they, the Chinese officials put Wuhan on lockdown, there were no food delivery trucks allowed into the city. And most people were not prepared. They were totally caught off guard. And I believe they did not allow food delivery trucks in for almost two weeks. So people almost died. There were people that the food levels in the city were very dangerously low. And of course, they reversed course and they changed policy. And then they started, uh, this was, I want to say about 10 days ago, they allowed food delivery trucks into Wuhan's wholesale food market. But then I think they realized that having a bunch of people who may have already been infected but were asymptomatic and not showing symptoms yet because the Cerveza problem has a very large incubation period, that having a bunch of people meet together in a wholesale food market was probably not a good idea. So... Many thousands of people in Wuhan almost starved, and then the food policy change to try to get them food was probably not a good idea either. And then about a week ago, they changed food policy again a third time, and they don't want people going outside because they're trying to keep people... What's the right word? They're trying to, they're trying to keep people from not meeting in large groups in public. And so what my source said he had to do was he had to go down his apartment building outside and then pay for the food and then they scanned his temperature <laughs> so so the food delivery person i guess it was a government employee then he was getting you know price hikes with ra pork rationing he was getting you know robbed basically with the high pork prices in exchange to buy pork and there was rationing he wasn't al only allowed to buy a certain amount of pork per week and then he was having his temperature taken so apparently that I'll let you guys know if I hear if the food policy changes again, but you've had three food policy changes in Wuhan now in barely a month. And the first the first policy for food, it most people were not prepared at all. They had no food prep they had no food stored. So they were caught off guard. They had not prepared at all. So this is a lesson to all of us that even though it might be a low probability event for something like this to actually happen, but the people there almost, there was thousands of people there who almost ran out of food. Scary stuff. Okay, so let me talk about, let me see here. I lost track here. I went off on another tangent. I'm making sure I'm giving you guys the stories. I've been saving these. And my source in Wuhan who's trapped there does check in every couple days. So if you have any more questions that are good, you can put them in the live chat or below the video and I could try to. The thing is people always ask for how many, how many um, bodies are being cremated per day at the crematoriums. And I don't think anyone really knows that number. I don't think anyone does. And if you try to get pictures or videos, it's not a good idea. It's a very, very bad idea. Okay, so there's going to be a grace period for unpaid loans to be kept off banks' books. The China banking regulator, CBIRC, said the regulator said it would be flexible in its regulatory reviews of banks whose borrowers were affected by the coronavirus. Out oh, oops, oh, shoot, I just said it. Who are, <laughs> okay, who are affected by the Cerveza problem. 
known as uh, COV, and then I'll, we'll just skip the rest. It would also accelerate lending and credit support for key investment projects. Man, it's so difficult to censor, self-censor yourself all the time when you're talking for over 24 minutes with uh, two sips of water. It's really difficult to self-censor yourself. This is why I don't talk about this more. I've already had five videos demonetized in the last 10 days. Okay, make that six. Hopefully it's not demonetized, but I think I, since I said it once, I think the uh, transcripts and the AI are going to pick it up. Oh, well. I Then people can't say I didn't do one of these videos. It would also accelerate lending credit support for key investment projects while supporting small and private firms hit by the Cerveza problem. We have been prepared in the bad loans and are confident to deal with the related problems in a state of in a stable way. Okay, financial support. This article is from Xinhuanet.com from last week. About financial support, quote, almost all of our 400 offline stores have been closed due to the epidemic, and we estimated the monthly losses around the spring festival would be at around 700 million to 800 million yuan, or about 100 million to 114 million US dollars. If the situation continues, our company will not be able to survive in three months, says Jia Guolong, chairman and founder of Shibei, a leading Chinese catering chain brand, said in a recent interview, Shibei is a uh, with an annual sales revenue of up to six billion yuan and over twenty thousand employees is one of the first to feel the pinch amid the contagion. Quote: The government relative, relevant departments and many banks have offered to help. The Shanghai Pudong Development Bank's Beijing branch offered to provide financial support for Shibei, and on February seventh, a total of one hundred twenty million yuan has been transferred to the restaurant giant's account. Meanwhile, many Chinese provinces and municipalities have rolled out supportive measures such as tax and rent reductions, delaying loan payments, cutting interest rates, and waiving overdue interest to help businesses tied over the ongoing epidemic. Quote, we were in urgent need of money and the loan effectively solved our problem eh, effectively solved our problem of lacking money to purchase raw materials, said Xu Jiwei, Jiwen, head of the Guangzhou Evertech Technology Development Company. His company sells machines for the development, testing, and manufacturing of disinfectants and has been given extra financing quota amid the epidemic. Quote, the financial support is not limited to enterprises relevant to the epidemic, but all small and micro enterprises in temporary difficulty, said Lu Fenghua, a deputy head of an ICBC, which is one of the two largest Banks in uh, state-owned enterprise banks in China branch in Guangzhou. China's central bank has added a total of 1.7 trillion yuan into the banking system recently via reverse repurchase agreements or repos. China does their repos a little bit differently than the U.S. I've talked about this quite a bit in the last month or so, but the end results are the same. Emergency liquidity injections that expire every 14 days, and then normally the PBOC, which is China's central bank, just renews them to different levels. Lower the repo rates by 10 basis points, boost liquidity, stabilize financial markets. I mean, this is these are great interviews here with all the different problems from all the different Chinese businesses. There's so many of them. It's, it's really sad. And again, the blame belongs to the Chinese government. The blame belongs to Beijing. The blame belongs to the provincial government in Hubei who did not want to move bad news up the chain. Go and listen to my Tony Nash interview from two months ago. Tony Nash also did an interview. He's a true China and Asia expert. He's lived there for a long time. And uh, he just did an interview with Grant Williams on Real Vision. I'm not sure if it's free on their YouTube channel. You could take a look. I'm not sure if they released that for free. It was beyond a paywall a couple days ago, the last time I saw. And then also the, the local government officials in Wuhan, they cared more about covering this up for way too long. By the time they actually did stuff to try to stop the virus from spreading, it had already gone exponential and was basically too late. Now the rest of the world is going to have to deal with it. Okay. Again, I have lots of articles here. If you want to spend a couple hours reading these articles to get a sense of the damage of how this is China's economic black swan, their Cerveza problem, is China's economic black swan. It's going to be worse than China's Chernobyl. It's going to be, excuse me, worse than Chernobyl economically for China. 
then um, definitely read a good amount of these articles. You'll get a real good sense of it. Also, before I forget, there is a good website that is updating this. You have to hit the refresh button. It's capitaleconomics.com. And they have a separate page that is tracking the different economic indicators out of the Chinese economy. So they cover new cases reported, total confirmed cases, total cases, deaths, recoveries, also average road congestion for traffic across 100 cities, which looks like it is totally collapsed. Wow, it's, it's down like enormously. Uh, daily passenger traffic. Passenger traffic person per kilometer, year-over-year -year percentage, passenger transport volumes, coal consumption at power plants, daily property sales, food, wholesale price, spending by overseas tourists, which has absolutely collapsed, manufacturing supply chain linkages, and okay, there's 12 charts that they update about the Chinese economy to get you a good idea. This intervention by China's central bank has also caused an enormous bond rally. So people are buying, the central bank is probably buying even more bonds or more people are buying bonds. They're being tricked into buying bonds. Chinese deal making, IPOs freeze amid virus outbreak. This is from Zero Hedge from February 11th. China has ground to a halt. On the ground indicators confirm worst case scenario. Zero Hedge from a couple days ago on Friday. February 14th, the stupid commercial holiday Valentine's Day. Surveys a problem. China's fear of mass job losses looms large as the virus takes toll on economy. South China Morning Post, February 13th. Again, if I read all these articles, it's really sad what's happening to the small business owners. Most of the people did not see this coming. They were not prepared most Chinese businesses, according to the estimates I've read, only have about three months of cash. So I guess the banks are going to have to give them credit lines, emergency credit lines. This is an interesting Barron's article that came out a couple days ago by Tanner Brown. Coronavirus. Oh, oh shoot. Oh, well. Uh, Cerveza problem brings China's debt problem back into light. CNN has a CNN business, which I normally don't like, has an article out on Friday from Laura Hay that small businesses drive China's economy. The Cerveza problem outbreak could be fatal for many. Small companies that drive China's economy worried about how much damage the novel, the novel Cerveza problem will cause. Without help or a reprieve from the disease, many may have only weeks to survive. While some larger companies are reopening their doors after weeks of lockdowns designed to contain the epidemic, small businesses often can't comply with the strict health rules now required in many regions, and many don't have the option of letting employees work from home. A survey of 163 companies of all sizes across China found that less than half were able to get back to work this week, according to investment bank China International Capital Corp., which published the results. Even more alarming, a third of roughly 1,000 small and medium-sized companies surveyed by academics from Xinhua University and Peking University last week said that they could only survive for a month with the cash they have. Wow, that's even... That's horrible. That's tragic. Imagine having a decent small business and then this happens. This is, this is so sad. That could spell terrible news for China's entrepreneurs and an even worse reality for the country's economy. About 30 million small and medium-sized businesses contribute more than 60% of the country's GDP, according to the government statistics published last se September. The taxes they pay account for more than half of government revenue, and they employ more than 80% of China's workers. It's not clear how many of those companies will ultimately feel the impact of the virus. Surveys cover only a tiny slice of the sector, and the full extent of the outbreak's consequences are still impossible to determine. But many small business, many small companies were already struggling before the Cerveza problem began in, uh, infecting tens of thousands across the country. I would argue that the real number is in the six hundred hundred thousands, well over a hundred thousand now, way way over a hundred. It was probably over a hundred thousand over a month ago. From the anecdotal evidence I've heard and the articles I've read, I, I'm thinking it was over a hundred thousand infected a month ago. And uh, if the rumors in the U.S. are true that there's over a thousand cases, I mean, this is going to get really bad. The next two to four weeks, we're going to know. We're going to know in the next two to four weeks how bad things are in the U.S. because of the incubation period. What Chris Martinson has been saying, how bad things are going to get in the U.S. We're going to know in less than a month. 
Okay, world's second largest economy has been slowing down due to a combination of rising debt, a slump in domestic demand, trade war with the U.S. Now they face going without business for weeks on end. The Cerveza problem could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, wrote Zhao Jian, director of Shandong province-based Atlantis, Atlantis Research Institute in a research note earlier this month. He warned that if the outbreak doesn't end soon, unemployment will likely rise as businesses shut down. A problem Beijing has been fighting hard this year to prevent. Job losses could spur a tide of housing foreclosures. Well, that's an interesting spin. Zhao added, compounding the country's economic woes. Uh, this is the this part of the article is we will die without more money. Some business owners have gone public with their plight. Beijing entrepreneur Wu Hai wrote on social media app WeChat this week that the outbreak could destroy more than 50 karaoke bars he runs across the country. The pastime has been halted as the government maintains a shutdown of popular entertainment spots where cross-infection risks, in air quotes, are high. That's truly tragic. Sounded like it was a popular business. 50 locations of karaoke bars. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, if you pay, if the stuff on Chinese social media, if even a percentage of the stuff is true, the real numbers are way larger than what Beijing's reporting. Okay, let me talk about this small business owner. In the post, Wu lamented the closures of his 50 karaoke bar locations and said the lack of business puts his 1,500, 1,500 workers at risk of losing their jobs. He wrote th that his company... Meek TV, M E I K TV, has about 12 million yuan or 1.7 million in cash on hand, giving it about two months to survive if he's unable to reopen for business. Quote, that means we will die in April unless investors continue to give us money. End quote, he wrote. Xu Kong Xuan, a chairman of Home, Origin Chick Home Original Chicken, said last Saturday that his fast food chain has shut more than 400 stores since the outbreak began. In a Weibo post, he warned that his company is in danger of running out of cash since it still needs to pay rent and employees. But he said he would try to make sure his employees keep their jobs, even if he needs to sell his houses and cars. Wow, this guy's a true warrior. A true hardcore small business owner and entrepreneur trying to do the right thing. That is shared sacrifice. Okay, that is not the... There are tons of publicly traded company CEOs and a lot of people in the gold mining space that did not have shared sacrifice. Shared sacrifice, running a company, very, very important. Your employees will go the extra mile for you if you do that. This guy knows how to run his business if he's uh, doing shared sacrifice like that. Little side note there. Other companies appear to be taking desperate measures to recoup at least some of their losses. Beijing-based Miju... My Joe Dongpo restaurant said on Weibo that its employees have set up stalls to sell fresh vegetables on the street. So that's not in Wuhan. That's in Beijing. They're selling fresh vegetables. That's interesting. You know, the, the videos coming out of Beijing, there's no traffic. I have not seen a lot of videos with a lot of people walking around, but I guess people go out to get food. I have seen stories where people are getting, uh, they're going to like the pharmacy, but they can't go anywhere near the purse, the cashier. So if they go to a restaurant, they're not supposed to sit at tables around a lot of other people and in Beijing. And if they get like bread or they go to a restaurant, they have to, <laughs> there's, there was a bakery. I saw a story about this where a bakery developed like this long wooden board that was a couple feet long. And that's how they're moving the bread on this long wooden board to get it to the customer so they don't touch. Meanwhile, the banks in China have been ordered to disinfect and destroy paper currency because they're worried that the currency could carry the Cerveza problem, too. Uh, Troy says he saw a report from China that said that blood plasma from survivors cures the Cerveza problem of infected people. We'll just have to get a transfusion if it gets out of China. So... That's not something that can be done for everyone quickly because they have to take the blood. The Chris Martinson was explaining this in a really recent video, but if, I guess I could summarize what he said. They have to get the blood from people who survived it, who are either naturally immune or survived it, and then that's how they do it. 
So they have to find survivors first, and that takes some time. Yeah, Japan had really bad economic numbers and a lot of it's with their trade to China. Neocraft says, destroy physical currency and to convert to digital is the goal. Well, they already wanted to launch the crypto yuan. That was supposed to be actually launched, I think, as early as November 11th. That was on Singles Day in China. That was their biggest shopping day. Oh, thank you for sharing this. Sparsile says his friends in northern China, 1,100 miles away from Wuhan, say that all restaurants and theaters are closed in their city. MWM48 says survivors would have to have the same blood type. Yeah, again, it's not going to be permanent for, it's not going to be a solution for everyone. So I have a bunch of different articles here about small business owners, the in China, the other zero hedge story, China has ground to a halt. This was from Friday, February 14th. On the ground indicators confirm worst case scenario. So just talking about the different daily coal consumption, my buddy Jeffrey Landsberg, who has a uh, hedge fund newsletter, Commodore Research, he's been sending emailing me updates on coal usage and i believe there's there was riots in the last couple weeks in different cities over food so the chinese government's having problems trying to make sure that people can go buy food i think that's the main issue right now is making sure everyone has access to go buy food but then again if you're there's a bunch of people together then you're risking getting infected it sounds like a bunch of bad bad uh, choices. Bad, dis Yeah, a bunch of bad choices. No good choices. Yeah, natural gas, oil, copper, base metals, those have gotten hit the hardest. There's been price discovery in those. Oil has rallied a little. It's over the WTI price was over 50 when I looked at it before I started this live stream. <clears throat> before i started this live stream been talking for over 40 minutes i think my voice is starting to go yeah a lot of the supply chains are messed up a lot of companies and a lot of other countries are not getting their supply chain shipments i mean apple look apple has a lot of their supply chain in china Foxconn is shut down and Apple stock is going up. Okay, tell me how ridiculous that is. Pablo says most of the container ships are off the coast of China ports and also they're not allowing those ships, I think, to go. They're not allowing them to dock in other ports. So I think a lot of those China ships are not allowed to dock in a lot of China ports. So they have to stay offshore. They don't want them coming on shore and potentially getting infected and then bringing it to another country, port in another country. If you go and look up what happened and how the 1918 pandemic spread, there was a book, Chris Martinson interviewed the author that even though the it was called the uh, Spanish flu, that most likely it actually started in Kansas in a small town that it was a swine flu. And then this was during World War One, and that a bunch of u.s military troops in world war one that were training at a military base in kansas that they got the infection and then they spread it in the ships so they spread it through the military and then it got spread through the navy and then the ships in the ports that's how the spanish influenza the 19, 1918 global pandemic they called it though the uh, spanish flu because i think six million spaniards died even though more people died in india and china from that flu and it looks like uh with the research that it actually started in kansas here in the united states but what is interesting about that is because most governments were fighting in world war one in the west that uh the governments did not release the number of deaths they were all lying so the only government that was honest back then for the 19, 1918 pandemic was spain
John Thompson says Bezos knows something. Well, the CDC employee may know something too. That's going around Twitter now. That she told one of her friends that over a thousand people in the U.S. are already infected and it's being covered up to prevent mass panic. Tia says Spanish were neutral in the war so they could afford to give out numbers. Yeah, and then they had their own civil war not too long after that, prior to World War II. Oh, it's it's over 70,000 cases. Oh, another 70,000? So we're over 100,000 now? Did you just say another 70,000 were released? Are we over 140,000 now? Um, it spread in the trenches in World War One. It did not start in the trenches. Pablo says he thought the Spanish flu originated from the trenches in World War One. No, it did not start there. Um, there's a book author, Chris Martinson, interviewed the guy for a second time. I can't remember his name offhand. He interviewed the guy a second time a couple weeks ago. And the guy wrote an excellent book about the 1999... Now that I'm talking for almost 50 minutes, my tongue's getting tied. It started in 19, uh, that the 1918 pandemic, while well, my brain's shutting down too, 1918 pandemic started in Kansas, that there was a lot of cases in a small town in Kansas of a swine flu, and that it, there was, um, it spread, the virus spread from pigs to humans, and then some of those people in that small town in Kansas were drafted into the military or volunteered in World War One, and they went to that military base in Kansas, and then the infections exploded. He traced the documents back and it exploded out of that military base in Kansas. Once it was in that military base in Kansas, it spread throughout the U.S. military like wildfire. And then it was on ships, and then those ships crossed the Atlantic Ocean for World War One, and it was it was all over the globe at that point. Wait, did they... Did they add another 70,000? Because I have the WuhanVirus.com and it says 71,230 are infected and 1,770 are dead. And this updates. Okay, let me check Super Chats. I got a lot of Super Chats here. La Petite Silver, thank you for the $5. Hit the thumbs up if you appreciate my vids as much as... Okay, I appreciate... Thank you very much for the kind words. She Sheepless in Georgia, New Mexico, thank you for the super chat. Silver Stacker, thank you for the super chat. Crypto Nana, thank you for the super chat. Says, keep up the good work. We appreciate you. Justin, who is normally on here with super chats, thank you, Justin. You know, Justin, if you want to become a Patreon account contributor, you can get content there, audio, podcasts, and articles that are behind my paywall. I have over 250 other people. Five bucks a month. Just saying. You already super chat tipped me quite a bit. Get more value on the Patreon, uh, behind the Patreon paywall. There was a new update out that I put out light last night. Update on the Sandstorm Gold Q4 2019 earnings, the Sandstorm Gold conference call, where I think there may have been a subtle or not so subtle hint dropped by the CEO about the next deal, and then also um, some tidbits from the annual report that just came out. Aggregator says over 1 million are most likely infected. We have the, I have no idea the real number. I know it's big. The real number is really big. The China number... The official one of 70-something thousand is nowhere near the... I, I, I honestly think there were 70,000 infected like six weeks ago. I think six weeks ago there were 70,000 infected in China. I think there's a lot of evidence that points to that. Look, the what is what people are posting young adults are posting on Chinese social media is is totally 100% not 100, uh, 180 degree total polar opposite from what the Chinese government is saying China Uncensored is covering this too if you're not familiar China Uncensored they're very good they're doing a good job they had a China Unscripted podcast where they were talking about 
the stories they were seeing on, on Chinese social media. Crypto Nana says Wuhan has 50 crematoriums going 24-7. Do the math. It could be 50. I heard there were seven more new ones that were built. So there's at least seven funeral homes that are that have crematoriums with that are running, and then there's probably seven more crematoriums that were built. I heard the crematoriums were built before the hospitals. That's what I heard. So the Western media is bending over backwards to help the Chinese government maintain the narrative that the Chinese government did an absolutely superb job of building the hospitals and they're doing a great job containing the virus. The truth is that China screwed this thing up royally for at least six weeks. John says, kind of funny how China's bioweapon facility is near Wuhan. John, you're incorrect. China has two bioweapon facilities in Wuhan for bioweapons testing and research. There were two facilities, not one. Okay, well, I think I should wrap Watching a woman advertisement. Oh, I got an advertisement. I don't know about that. This thing is going to be demonetized. I accidentally slipped up a couple times. Instead of saying Cerveza problem. Anyway, I tried to share some of the knowledge, but the, the economic central planning does not work. The Chinese government cared more about power and, power and control, maintaining the narrative, looking good rather than fixing the problem. And... As Tony Nash said in that interview, no one, whether it was at the local Wuhan government or the provincial authorities in Hubei, did not want to move bad news up the chain at first. And so they waited. They, they sat on this and covered it up until it got out of hand. Haster, um, I, that could still be demonetized. I don't know. Probably have to use a totally different word. Uh, Raw BS says the Western media trashing China causes internal instability equals bad situation. No, I think it's the same. Uh, I think the Western media, Facebook, Google, those guys are all on the Chinese government's payroll. Michael Bloomberg's getting big fees from the Chinese government. Look at my work on Wall Street bailing out China. I did a video on this in the last couple weeks about the Bloomberg Global Bond Fund Index. You know, honestly, I hope Trump brings this up about Bloomberg, how he sold out to the Chinese government. If Trump hammers, if Trump hammers Bloomberg on that, look, I'm not going to vote for Trump, but I hope he shines a light on how corrupt Bloomberg is. Shine a light on how Bloomberg got very, very big fees to move a lot of Amer a retirement savings of Americans to the Chinese government for a bailout. By moving Chinese state-owned enterprise bonds into the Bloomberg Global Bond Index Fund. Kyle Bass and Emma Molman did the research on this. Douglas says Bloomberg wants to move one trillion of USA pension funds to China. Yes, that's the Wall Street and banks are also talking about that too. So you have the Bloomberg Global Bond Index Fund, and then you also have the China claiming to open up their markets for uh, insurance and futures trading. The CDC is warning of counterfeit masks found on Amazon. Since you guys are my friends here, I'll tell you how I got my masks. I was able to get N95 masks just a couple days ago from a local hardware store. How did I do that? The local hardware store doesn't have a good online website. So if you don't have your masks yet, call up your local hardware store. Not Home Depot, not Lowe's, not the grocery store. Call up your local hardware store that doesn't have a good website. Maybe they just have a website just with their phone number on there. And that's how I was able to get my masks. Local hardware store without a good online e-commerce website. Because I spoke last week to a Home Depot employee and the guy said that they were being offered bribes. 
They were people were calling up all the time asking to buy 500 masks or more, entire cases of inventory, and a few people even offered to pay them like $100 or more, Home Depot employees, to give them a call ahead of time when the mask another shipment of the masks came in. Yeah, I don't know how much the mask will actually help. I mean, I'm I'm not a doctor, so I can't give health advice, but I have um, structured silver in my bloodstream. I take it for cold and flu season for the last four years. David Morgan, Silver Guru, recommended the brand. Thank you, silver.com. They're not an advertiser. So I take two teaspoons a day now, and uh, it works for cold and flu season. It's really good. Okay, well, that's it for right now. I'm getting tired. I will put all these stories in the information and description section since there's over a dozen. There's too many to talk about tonight. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Hopefully this video isn't demonetized, but if it is, oh, well, at least you got some good information, right?